الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to E21. Today's lecture will be the 17th. And in today's lecture, we're going to actually discuss more advanced topics on Chapter 7. In particular, we're going to study what happens if you just disconnect a circuit, disconnect a circuit from a source. And that circuit has a resistor and an inductor, or a resistor and a capacitor. But before that, there are a few announcements. So the first one is homework two. It's posted, and then shall let's do this Thursday at 11:59. Uh, the uh, quiz three will be shall on Sunday, and uh, it's going to cover 4.5 to uh, 4.11. Going over what we did last time. So uh, if, you, if you recall that we introduced inductors and we introduced capacitors, we said that uh, inductors are circuit elements that store magnetic energy. Uh, for capacitors, we said that uh, those are circuit elements that store electric energy. And we studied the relation between uh, the positive and the current in, in, all of, in, in both of them. For, uh, for an inductor, voltage is given by L di by dt. For a capacitor, current is given by I C D V by D T, and L is the inductance, C is the capacitance, and we show that uh, the current passing through a capacitor and inductor cannot change instantaneously, and this is a very important observation that we're going to capitalize on in, in, in this lecture. Also, we showed that the voltage across the capacitor terminals cannot change instantaneously also. And also this is a, a result uh, that we're going to utilize in this lecture. A very important thing that also we're going to utilize in this lecture is if you have an inductor and this inductor is connected to a DC source, it will behave like a short circuit after a very long time. If you connect it and then you, you wait for uh, for a few more minutes, usually, uh, you, if you want to measure the voltage across the capacitor, uh, the inductor it will be it will be zero, which means that it behaves like a short circuit at DC. The capacitor, on the other hand, behaves like an open circuit uh, at DC. Uh, so, in, in conclusion, uh, we have uh, four observations. So the first one is the current cannot change instantaneously. Uh, the current passing from an inductor cannot change instantaneously. The second one is the voltage passing or the voltage across the capacitor terminals cannot change instantaneously. The third observation that if we have an inductor and uh, it's been connected to a DC source for a very long time, then the inductor will behave like a short circuit. Uh, meaning that the voltage across it will be zero. And the fourth and the last observation here is that if we have a capacitor and the capacitor is connected to a DC source, after a very long time, the capacitor will behave like an open circuit. So the, uh, the current passing through it will be zero. Okay, let's capitalize on this. And this is study the natural response of RL, uh, RL circuits. So remember what we, uh, here's the big picture. So you have a circuit with capacitor and a resistor, or an inductor, uh, inductor and a resistor, or a capacitor and a resistor. And this circuit has been connected to a source. Let's say that we have. Let's consider, for example, this circuit. This has been connected to a source, a current source, for example. And the, the inductor being charged, uh, uh, serving magne magnetic energy, then all of a sudden, you decided to disconnect that source. You remove this source. So there is an eventual, uh, eventually, uh, the uh, the everything will reach the steady state, but after 
immediately after you uh, disconnect the source, there are some interesting behavior that we're going to study. And this is the major, um, or this is the big picture of this, of this chapter. We want to study exactly what happens just a few, uh, I, I wouldn't say milliseconds, just a few uh, moments after either removing the source or actually adding the source. So when we, when we remove the source, we're talking about natural response. When we add the source, we're talking about the step response. So that's that's the, the overall picture. Yes, sir? Yes, doctor, sorry for bothering, but I keep facing the problem where I can't see the shared screen until you unshare and share. Maybe I'm the only one facing the problem, but I don't know how to fix it. Okay, let me let me reshare and see if we can. Yes, now I can see it. Thank you. Bye. And let's start with the circuit that has an inductor and a capacitor, an inductor and a resistor. And let's study what's, what's going on. Okay, so just give me one second to make sure that I have my own marks. Okay. So we have the following scenario. What we want to do is we want to study the current I. We want to find the value of the current I versus time. So the circuit has been connected this way for a very long time. Then at T equals to zero, you decided to, there's a switch here, and you decided to open the switch. So when you open the switch, the source is not connected anymore to the circuit. So you remove the uh, you remove the uh, the source. So you want to study what happens, uh, or you want to study the expression for the current, and again the expression for the voltage across the resistor R. So in order to do that, uh, you need to actually classify or divide the problem into two parts. So the first one is what happens before you close before you open the switch. And the second one, what happens after you open the switch? Okay, so the switch, let me just write it here. The switch, this is the switch. Is closed for a long time. So how does the inductor, uh, what would be the behavior of the inductor in this case? You have a switch, the switch has been closed for a, for, a, for a very long time, so it, it's, it's a lot like this. Is it uh, totally charged? Uh, yes, but what, what circuit element that uh, this inductor behave, behave like it? short circuit uh, exactly exactly it behaves like a short circuit so the inductor behaves as a short circuit okay what happens if we have uh, if the inductor behaves like a short circuit what will be the equivalent resistance seen by the source? Zero. Uh, Shubha, please raise your hand uh, so I can. Okay. So the equivalent resistance will be zero. So we have everything uh, behaves like a short circuit. So this is IS. This is what used to be an inductor here. And the current here, I call it IL, equals to I naught. 
and equals to i s. So I'm just going to I'm going to call this current i naught and i naught is equal to uh, i s. So this is the current. Before the switch has been open. So the switch been been closed for a long time and this is the current passing through the inductor. The voltage of course will be zero. Now we actually decided to open the switch. So when you open the switch, you isolate the source and R naught. So when the switch is open, the circuit is redrawed like this. So I have an inductor. So this is a transitional point. So the inductor does not is not going to behave like a short circuit at this point. Because there is a, an abrupt, there is a change. Uh, there is there is a disruption in the system here, a disturbance in the system. And uh, the inductor will not behave like a short circuit at this stage. I have an inductor. I have a full, uh, have a resistor R. This is the voltage I'm interested in. Let me just label this in a different color. And this is the current I'm interested in. So the inductor is being charged with the current I not here. This comes from the previous uh, situation. And by noticing that, well, <clears throat> the current passing through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So this is the current, uh, the initial current at uh, passing through the, uh, the inductor immediately after you close, after you open the switch. Now we want to find an expression for the current here, I, not the current passing through the inductor, it's the current I. Oh, actually, it's it's the current blessing for the inductor. So in order to do that, uh, let's apply KVL. Um, so at this stage, we are strongly familiar with KVL. So what we can say here is that we have the voltage across the inductor VL plus V equals to zero. We know VL is L di by dt plus, remember the polarity of V here, VL, this way, plus R multiplied by the current equals to zero, or at something like this. I will do one simple simplification here. I will divide both sides by L. So I'm going to get R divided by L multiplied by I. Right. Okay. This is what? This is a differential equation. As if you recall, we gave an example of a differential equation, and this is one of the one of the differential equations that we this is a first order differential equation. So in order to find the current here, we need to use a concept in differential equations called separation of variables. And we will explain it in a moment. So let's use Let's see what's going on. So remember the the uh, the equation that we're trying to solve, di by dt equals to minus r divided by l multiplied by r. So now we have di. I will I will divide uh, both sides by i. 
and multiply both sides by dt. So I have di by, uh, divided by i minus r l divide, uh, multiplied by dt. Okay, so now the left side is, uh, is only a function of i, the right hand side is actually a function of uh, t. So this is this is the meaning of separation of variables. So I have one side of a single variable, which is t. The other side is with another variable, which is i. So now I need to integrate both sides. So if I integrate both sides, I will get i t naught t dx divided by x. equals to minus r divided by l t naught t d tau. So if I solve for it, I will get the natural logarithm of i of t divided by i of t naught equals to <clears throat> minus r over l t minus t naught. Okay, if we assume t naught equals to zero in this case, we will get now remember my goal is to find an expression for i. Uh, so in order to find an expression for i here, I need to uh, extract it from the natural logarithm. So in this case, I need to take the, the natural exponential of both sides. And uh, if I take e of both sides, I will get <coughs> i of t, i of zero, multiplied by t, or in this case, i of t is i zero. So the current at t equals to zero multiplied by uh, the exponential of r, a negative r divided by l, uh, multiplied by t. So remember i of zero is the current at time equals to zero, the time, the switching time, the time that the, uh, the time that the switch was open uh, back here. And remember also from the beginning of the lecture, we said the current passing through an inductor cannot change instantaneously, and this is actually the current passing through the inductor. So it's equal to I of zero negative. Zero negative mean the moment just before the switch is open, and it's equal to uh, I zero positive. Zero positive means the moment immediately after the switch is uh, uh, after the switch is open. And this is equals to I naught, which is in this case I s. So I of t now is, can be written as I naught or t greater than minus. So any question about this derivation? Okay. What do you expect, Shabab, if, if we go back to the original circuit here? When the switch is open, what do you expect the, uh, the final value of the current here? What's your intuition about the, fi the final value of the current? Yes, sir. Maybe it will be close to zero. 
It will be yes. It will be zero. Let's see what happens in this expression. So if you take t equals to infinity, which means a long time, very long time after the switch has been closed, uh, been open, then in this case the value of the current is zero. But if you plot it, uh, if you plot this expression first time, you will see that the current will start decreasing until uh, decreases slowly until it reaches zero. And this is going to give us the uh, the kind of like uh, an an overview of the uh, of the of of the of the behavior of the system immediately after you uh, disturb that system, disturbing the system here by disconnecting the the cells. Okay. So so now we found the current. Uh, we need to find the voltage. So we can, the voltage here is the same as the voltage uh, of the, uh, of, uh, the voltage passing uh, or, or the voltage across the resistor. So we can simply apply, uh, we, can sim we can simply apply Ohm's law. So Vt equals to I naught R. Now I scale the voltage by a factor of R. E to the power minus R divided by L T. And this is true at T equals to uh, T greater than or equals to zero plus. At the moment when the switch is open, the voltage is not defined. Remember, for an inductor, we don't have any restriction regarding the voltage. So the voltage can change actually instantaneously, but the current cannot change instantaneously. So uh, we have the following uh, statement. So immediately, before the switch has been open, <clears throat> the, the voltage is zero. And immediately after the switch is open, the voltage is I naught multiplied by R. OK, so now we found the, we found the current, we found the voltage. And uh, we can actually derive the uh, power and energy. It should be straight for uh, extension. To find the power, we need to take the current multiplied by the voltage. As simple as that. Or I can take the voltage squared divided by R or the current squared multiplied by R. Anyhow, if you use any of these techniques, you will wind up with the following expression for the uh, for the power. And again, the power is actually defined at t greater than or equals to zero plus. Now to find the energy. We need to actually integrate the power. And let's make the following observation here. So this is the energy. 
dissipated or the energy uh, delivered to the uh, the resistor. So remember, we have a uh, we have an inductor in parallel with the resistor, and this expression is for the energy delivered to the resistor. So let's observe what's what's going on here. So for t equals to zero, what will be the value of the energy? Maximum. Uh, it will be zero. T equals to zero. Uh, this one, this term is one. And the energy will be zero. And eventually, when T equals to infinity, the energy will uh, will be uh, again here. I think there's a square here. Yes. Okay. The energy here, as T approaches infinity, the energy will be one half L I naught square. So what is this energy? Remember, let me state this one. Energy. delivered to the resistor. So what is this energy? What is that energy, this one? Ziad? Inductors. This is the initial energy of the inductor, exactly. So as T approaches infinity, the, the energy of the inductor has been completely uh, delivered to uh, the resistor. Excellent. So let's summarize what we did. So we started with the following circuit here. Uh, we said we are interested in finding this current. We are interested in finding this current and that voltage. So since we have a switch, and the switch has been open for, uh, been closed for a long time, then uh, at t equals to zero, the switch was open. So we need to subdivide or we need to divide this problem into two sub problems. So we need to study uh, I when the switch is open and I when the switch is closed. So when the switch is closed, which is the initial case, we find that, we found that, well, uh, the current I is going to be uh, similar to the. Uh, we see uh, we saw that the branch is not there because it's going to be in parallel with uh, with an inductor, and the inductor will behave like a short circuit in DC. So we derived the initial value, or we found the initial value of the uh, of the current passing through the inductor. Then at when the switch is open. Uh, we have a uh, an inductor in parallel with a resistor. So in this case, we applied KVL to find the expression for the current. We saw that after a series of integrations and simplifications, we saw that well, uh, the current will be equal will be equal to I naught, the initial value of the current multiplied by a decaying factor, and that decaying factor is e to the power negative r divided by l uh, multiplied by t. Now, if we want to find the voltage, we have multiple options. The, the first one, we know that the voltage uh, here is the voltage uh, across the capacitor, uh, across the resistor, which is exactly the same as the voltage passing through the inductor. Uh, again, here we have a negative sign because of the direction of the current. But uh, by applying Ohm's law, we found the voltage. Then from the voltage, we found the expressions for the current and for uh, for the power and uh, for the energy. So this is basically what we did. So you saw here, there's a key element or key a quantity that we need to find first, and everything else is straightforward. Nothing, nothing fancy here. Everything else depend everything else depends on one single quantity and that single quantity is the current so this is just a summary uh, 
we have the expression for the current, and this is the uh, initial value, and the voltage is is given by this uh, by this form. Okay, and this is an important observation here. The value of the voltage at T equals to zero is not known. So an important, uh, any question before we start uh, this part? So when we have a natural response, we have something called a time constant. What do we mean by time constant? A time constant is the time needed for the current to reduce to 37% of its initial value. So if we go back here and we take, for example, this expression and we said, what will be the value of the uh, current or what will be the value of uh, this exponential such that this one is equal to 0.37 and alpha here is actually R divided by L. It turns out that this happens if T equals to 1 divided by alpha, meaning that E should be equals to E to the power negative 1. If you, if you have your calculator and uh, try to find the value of uh, E to the power negative 1, you see it's 0 0.37. So what does it tell you here? When t equals to 1 divided by alpha, which is in this case our alpha is r divided by l, so uh, 1 over alpha is l divided by r, we have the value or the current passing it through the inductor or passing it through, through the circuit is being reduced to 37% of its initial value. So if I say I, it's going to be 0.37 I naught. And this is exactly what we mean. So usually we uh, we represent the time constant, uh, the symbol for the time constant is tau. And again, since it's time, so the unit should be seconds. Now, uh, if you remember, the, when, when, we, when we were deriving the expression for the, for the current, we, we stated that the, uh, the switch been open, switch been closed for a very long time. So what do we mean? I mean, very long time is, is very subjective. So it depends on how you define very long time. And in circuit analysis, or in, 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 the, switching, uh, in the switching paste analysis here, we define long time as five time constant. So this time, not knowing the time constant is very important because if, if the elapsed time is five multiplied by the time constant or greater, then we consider this uh, as a very long time. And uh, in this case, the current is actually reduced to less than 1% of its initial value. So this allows us to classify or to uh, or to divide the analysis into two, two parts. The first part is transient response. Things that happens immediately after the switch is open or the switch is closed, depending on, on the circuit you have. And this is classified, or this is uh, defined as the time uh, between uh, the, the occurrence of the event, which is opening the switch or closing the switch, uh, to five time constants. Then after five time constant, we have steady state. The response that uh, the system is stable, everything is 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 expected. Everything is almost uh, like its final value. Okay, if you if you if you plot the timeline, this is T. You'll see that. 
at five tau, at, at five tau, you will have something called transient. Then after that, you will have steady state. So you may ask yourself, is is this uh, is this uh, border? Is it a firm border or is it uh, clear? Or is it like ambiguous? It's actually ambiguous. It's not. It's not something very. Uh, it's not something that uh, I would say like very uh, strict to appear. So if you are 4.9 multiplied by time constant, you are in the transient uh, domain or in transient uh, in the transient period. If you are 5.1 time constant, you are in the steady state. It's it's not like this, but. This is kind of like the, the rule of thumb in our case. Any question? Okay, just resetting the values. So one time constant is, uh, this one is uh, 0.367, which is 0.37. Two time constant is 0.135. Uh, three time constant is 0.049. Fourth time constant is 0 0.018. Uh, five time constant is actually 0 0.0067, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, now we have a circuit and we want to find the natural response. Do we need each time if we if we have a different circuit like this? Uh, do we need each time to, to re-derive the, uh, the analysis? It turns out, no, you don't need to do anything like this. You know that eventually you will end up with an expression similar to uh, this expression here. So you will, you will end up with an expression similar to this expression. So you need to actually uh, substitute the parameters. So it turns out the first thing you need to do is actually you need to find the initial current, something similar to what we did. So you need to find the initial current through the inductor. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is you need to find the time constant because this is usually straightforward. Uh, tau equals to L divided by R. The question is what R here? R here is the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor. After the switch is open or closed depending on the depending on the on the problem that you have. Or after the transition, let's see like this is would be a better. Then once you know, once you have everything, once you uh, find I naught, once you find the time constant, the expression for the current is always something like this. If you know the current, you can find the voltage by applying Ohm's law or taking the derivative of the current. If you know the current and the voltage, you can find the power and the energy. So the 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 good thing about this analysis or this type of problems is that it has a very systematic way of solving these problems. Yes, the derivation is uh, kind of like uh, complex, but once you derive it, once you reach the final, uh, the final acceleration, you will see that any problem with the current, with the uh, an inductor and the resistor, or an equivalent inductance and equivalent resistor, so we'll see in, example, in, in a moment, it's going to be, is going to have the current passing through the inductor or the current passing through the, the resistor, in this case, will have the following expression. The only thing you need to do is fill in the missing components or find the missing components, which are two, in our case, I naught and tau. Okay, uh, so let's... Uh, <coughs> Let's solve an exercise here. Okay, any question before we start? I need to catch my breath.
Cool. <clears throat> so in this case, we have a switch. And the switch been uh, closed for a long time. Then all of a sudden, the switch is open at t equals to zero. So what we want to do is we want to. So this is the switch. Uh, <clears throat> what we want to do, we want to find the current passing through the inductor. Uh, for t, we want to find the expression for the current passing through the inductor for t greater than or equals to zero. So again, we have a recipe for finding this. The recipe says, well, first of all, find the current passing through the inductor. Find the initial current passing through the inductor. So what we need to do is actually we need to do the following here. We need to draw the circuit just before the switch just before opening the switch. So if we go back here, we have a 20, uh, 20 ampere, and we have 0.1 ohm, two Henry, uh, three other resistors. And remember the car, uh, the inductor is a DC, the switch been closed for a long time. So the inductor will behave like a short circuit here. And this is IL. So let me ask you this question, what is IL here? Just before the switch is open. Mohanad? Mohanad? It will equal 20 ampere. It's, it will be equal to 20 ampere. So this is the value of the current passing from the inductor immediately before the switch is open. And it happens to be, it must be equal to the current passing through the inductor immediately after the switch is open. And this is equal to I naught. So now we found one term here. So uh, we need to find uh, tau. That's the only missing term. So again, uh, let's consider the circuit when the switch is, uh, is open. So when the switch is open, We have a two Henry inductor. We have two ohm resistor. We have a 10 ohm resistor. We have a 40 ohm resistor. And again, this is IL. This is I. So remember, tau is L divided by R. But what R here? It should be the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor. So what is the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor? Here? Walid? Yes, uh, 40 ohm and 10 ohm are in parallel. Yes. So, uh, uh, so, uh, you, didn't, you didn't need to give me the values. So okay. I, I have yeah, then uh, we, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, 2 ohm, it will be in series with 2 ohm. 
Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do I need to write it this way? Our tablet or our equivalent? So our equivalent here. is 2 plus 10 in parallel with 40, and this is going to give me 10 ohm. OK, now I know L. Uh, I, know, uh, I know R, so tau will be L divided by R, which is uh, L2 here, divided by 10. And this is going to give me 1 over pi or 0.2 seconds. OK, so now I have basically everything. I found everything I need, so I need to substitute the expression. I L of T, I not in this case is 20. Tau is 0.2. The unit is amperes, and this is 240 greater than 0. Or if I simplify it, 1 over 0.2 is, is, is 5. So it's going to be 5. OK, very good. Uh, Ziad, question? Uh, yes. When we found the R7, we considered the inductor to be kind of an independent source. No, when, when you find the uh, Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor, so you would disconnect the inductor, and you would assume that this one is A, this one is B, then you find the resistance between, the Thevenin resistance between A and B. Okay. Uh, Mohanad? Uh, so like, if we have the same question, but instead of the of the current source, we have a voltage source. Should we just use source transformation and solve it like this, or there is another another method? Uh, it 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 depends on the problem itself. If you can find the current, because here you should be interested in finding the current. If if you cannot find the current, then you might need to to use source transformation. Because ultimately, you need to find the current. If you have something like this. Uh, uh, how to, how to do it this way? And you can find the current, so you don't need a search transformation for that. So it depends. What you'd really, in, uh, when you have questions related to inductors, you'd really give them in terms of current rather than voltage, because eventually uh, you need the current. But, okay. So the second part is asking us to find I naught 40 greater than uh, zero plus. Why we have uh, we need to find I naught 40 greater than zero plus? Because the uh, when the switch is closed, when the switch was closed, I naught was zero. I naught remember is the current passing through the resistor, and the current passing through the resistor need not to change uh, instantaneously. So it can change instantaneously. So that's why we to, we, we're we saying that we are interested in finding the current, I naught, 40, 40 greater than uh, zero plus.
Okay, how to find I not? Remember, this is I in. How to find I not? I'm looking for more names. Bye. Okay, I'm looking for new names. Jimmy Al, everybody resting. Bye. Uh, maybe we can use uh, the current divider. Exactly. I not will be what? I not will be 10 over 50 times uh, I L. 10 over 50 times I L. We have a negative sign here. Yes. So in this case, it should be minus I L divided by five. So we know I L. I L was 20. 20 divided by five is four. So. So I just want to point something out. Not that. OK. So uh, the second part is asking, or the third part is asking us to find V0, which is the voltage across the resistor. So this is, Shabab, this is easy. I should see uh, more hands here. How to find it? Ahmed Al-Aziz Aswaylam. Yes, uh, we can multiply uh, the current we just got uh, by 40, the resistance. Exactly. So, V naught will be R multiplied by I naught, which is going to be 160 multiplied by E to the bar negative 5T. Volt and this one is defined for t greater than zero. Okay, the uh, the fourth part is asking us to find the percentage of the total energy stored in the two Henry inductor uh, that's dissipated in the ten ohm resistor. So you may ask yourself, what will be the best way to approach this problem? And the Kareem question. So we need to find the first of all, we need to find the energy in the uh, 10 ohm resistor, and we need to find the energy of the inductor and then take the ratio of those. So for the 10 ohm resistor, we need to, in order to find the energy, we need to find the power. So power is again here, I can I can find the current passing through the 10 ohm resistor and then take the power. Uh, or I know the voltage from the previous part uh, of across the 40 ohm, and they know 40 ohm and 10 are in parallel, so I can use this knowledge directly. So it's going to be V squared divided by R, uh, which is in this case, uh, R is equals to 10, and this is going to give me 2560. So the energy dissipated by the 10 ohm resistor, I need to take the integral from 0 to infinity, 2560e minus 10t. And this happens to be, if you solve the integral, you will get 256 joules. OK, this is good. Now we need to find the energy stored in the inductor at t equals to zero. The initial energy stored at one inductor, and we know by at this time we know that the energy in the inductor is one over L I squared. I here is the initial current, which is 20. 
So one, this is going to be 400 joules. So the percentage will be 256 divided by 400 multiplied by 100. And this is going to give us 64%. So 64% of the energy is dissipated uh, through the 10 ohm resistor. The remaining 36% uh, is dissipated across the 40 ohm and uh, the 2 ohm resistor. OK, uh, let's consider another exercise here. So this is quite complicated exercise, but it's not, it's not that, it's not, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's not doable, it's really doable. It needs sometimes to, to uh, think about the best strategy of solving the problem before actually solving the problem. So let's see what we have. We have the following circuit, and in these circuits we have uh, two inductors in parallel, and these two inductors have initial voltage, uh, initial current. We have a switch. The switch been uh, been closed for uh, the switch been uh, closed for a long time, and then. Uh, The switch is open at t equals to zero. So what we want to do, what we are asked to do, is we are asked to find I1, I2, and I3 for t greater than zero. This is the first thing that we were asked to do. And let's see what, uh, what, what's the best way to do that. So in my opinion, the best way is actually to find the, uh, <clears throat> the voltage when the switch is open. Why? Because if I know the voltage, I can find the current passing through each inductor. Because again, the current, if you know the voltage, you can integrate the voltage to get the current. So, and the voltage, I have two inductors. So the only thing that's common among them is actually the voltage, because they are connected in parallel. So let, let me try to find the voltage uh, <coughs> across when the switch is open. And let me write it this way. So the best approach is to So when the switch is closed, uh, V naught uh, or VT will be zero right here, because when the switch is closed, VT will be a short circuit, and you have a short circuit, and you know that uh, the voltage across the short circuit is zero. Okay, so let me draw the circuit here. I have inductors, and here I'm, I'm assuming that I'm considering the equivalent inductors here. So I have two inductors connected in parallel, so their equivalent inductors will be their, uh, the parallel combination of those, and the initial current will be the summation of the initial currents here. So the equivalent, And when the switch is open, I have 40, I have 10 in parallel with 15, in series with 4, and this is going to be in parallel with 40, so the parallel combination 
or the combination of the Thevenin resistance seen by uh, by the inductors or the covenant inductance is actually 8 ohm. And this one is actually I total. This one is the current. And this one is VT. So now if I if I give you the uh, if I give you uh, this problem, you should be able to solve it because in this case you have inductor in parallel with the resistor. And I'm giving you the initial current in the inductor. So basically I'm giving you exactly uh, you, you the only thing that you're asked to do is to find the time constant. So just let me write the equivalent here. So remember to find the current IT, you need I naught divided by T. So you know everything here. The only thing missing is actually tau. I naught is I total. Tau will be L equivalent divided by 8, which is in this case uh, 1 over 2 or 0.5 seconds. So now I of T is going to be 12 e to the power negative 2T and there. T greater than zero. Okay, now I found the current. I can easily find the voltage. Uh, all what I need to do is actually multiply that voltage, multiply that current with uh, with the equivalent resistance. So I can say that. This one, remember, this one is eight. So V of T would be 96. So eight multiplied by 12 is 96. E to the power negative 2T volt T greater than zero. Okay. So what did I do here? I found the voltage across these two inductors. Can I find the current? The answer is yes, from the previous lecture or the lecture before that. The current I1 here, which is the current passing through the five Henry, uh, the five Henry uh, inductor is going to be one over its inductance, the integral of the voltage from zero, which is the initial value here, to T, D alpha, plus the initial value. So let me go ahead and substitute. So L1 is actually 5. I1 is actually negative because remember the direction here is, uh, is, is a negative to the direction of, according to the passive sign convention, this one is should be negative. So this one will give me uh, negative 8. So if I solve for it, I1 of T, 
I will get 1.6 minus 9.6 uh, okay, 9 minus 9.6 uh, e to the power minus 2t and there and this is so for t greater than zero I can do the same with I2. I2 is the current passing through inductor 2. The only difference here is I need to change the inductance from 5 to 20. I need to change the initial current from uh, 4, uh, from, uh, from 8 to 4. So this is going to give me uh, the following. 1 over 20. 96 minus oh. so if I solve for it I will end up with 0.6 minus 2.4 Okay, so now we found I1, I2. The remaining part is to find I, I3. So to find I3, I can uh, do one uh, one of the circuit analysis techniques that, that we used so far. So what I can do is actually I can find the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor and using the knowledge about the voltage to find the current using ohm's law. So if I if I ask you to find the voltage across if if you know the voltage across the 40 ohm resistor, can you find the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor? Can you sure find the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor? Okay. Yes. How? Uh, I they are connected in parallel. Yes. So I could do the voltage, uh, like say uh, the uh, oh, they also have the same voltage. Okay, but no, forty is not in parallel with uh, ten. Then can I make the ten and fifteenth uh, uh, in parallel? Then I multiply the, uh, then I add the four. Then I they will be in parallel. Then yes. I could do. The voltage, uh, then I could get the voltage through. Them. Yes, yes, you can do that. Uh, it's actually this is the, the way we're going to do it. So we will have 10 and 15, they are in parallel and they are in series with 4. So I have the parallel combination here will be 6, and I have 4 in series with 6, and this one. Is actually, uh, I would say, like this one is, uh, I know the voltage. So, if I ask you to find the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor, you would say that the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor will be uh, by voltage division. It's going to be 6 divided by 10 multiplied by Vt, and this is going to give you. 57.6 e to the power negative 2t volt and this is so for t greater than zero plus now you know the voltage and you know the resistance so you can easily apply ohm's law so i3 of t will be v10 of t divided by 10 this is going to give you 5.76 Okay, <clears throat> so we're done with the first part. The second part is asking us to find the initial energy store in the parallel inductors. So you can do that. You can find the initial energy store in the parallel inductor by finding the initial energy store in the uh, first inductor plus the initial energy store in the second inductor. 
And in this case, you know the inductance of the first one is five. The initial count is eight. So it's going to be eight squared. Here, this one is 20. The initial uh, current is four, so four squared. And this is going to give you 320 joules. OK, now we found this. So what we want to do next is to determine how much energy is stored in the inductors as T approaches infinity. So what do you think uh, we should do here? Well, again, we are interested in finding the energy stored in the inductor as T approaches infinity after a very long time. So what we know about these inductors? What quantity we know about these inductors? We know their currents, right? From T equals to zero to T equals to infinity. The Kirim? Yeah, I was just going to say that. OK. So what we need to do now is actually we need to take, we need to see uh, or determine the current as T approaches infinity. So going back to the expression I1, you see that as T approaches infinity, the term of the exponential will be zero. So you will end up with uh, I1 equals to 1.6 amperes. I2, in this case, is going to be negative 1.6 amperes. OK, now I know the currents as T approaches infinity, so I can find, using the same strategy that I did, I can find the, uh, the, the energy store as T approaches infinity. So even if you connect the, uh, the inductors to uh, external circuit, the energy will not be completely dissipated. Okay. You still have a residual of 32 joules. Okay, now we show that the total energy delivered to the resistive network equals to the difference between uh, the results obtained in two and three. So basically, what we want to do, we want to find the energy delivered to the resistive network. So let's find the energy delivered to the, uh, the, the resistive network is represented by the Thefner resistance. So let's find the energy delivered uh, to the Thefner resistance here. Which is again 8 ohms. So we know the expression for the bar. I, uh, which is 12, E minus 2 alpha, V, which is 96, E minus 2 alpha, D alpha. In this case, it's going to be 288 joules. So the resistive network will uh, dissipate 288 joules. So what we want to do, we want to show that out of the initial energy stored in the inductors, 288 joules are dissipated through the resistive network 
and 32 joules are uh, uh, remains with the inductance. So this is to say that if you take this value, add 32 to it, you will get initial energy. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you inshallah on next week. And next week we'll start with the capacitor, capacitive circuits. Yes, I'm the uh, just, just could you back one, could you back uh, one slide? Yes. Uh, uh, how we have uh, 32 joules still with them? I mean, logically. Uh, the, you are overcharged these, these inductors. We can do that? Yes. Okay, thank you. This is what we cannot handle. Uh, uh, there's some sort of saturation that's, that cannot be handled by the resistor. Okay, clear, thank you. Ahmed? Uh, doctor, could you please uh, uh, email us uh, some old exams because uh, KVVM resist, uh, resources is not uh, working with me. I, I don't have all the exams. The only thing I have are the ones that students have. What about the all the the the, the last uh, semester? No, we cannot. I cannot the change. Old exam of the... I, I, cannot, I cannot change because the last semester is, is completely different. It's online. Even but the exam. materials, but the material of the midterm is the, the same. I think. No, the type of questions, uh, the way question being asked is completely different. Uh, I cannot okay. change. And by the way, if, if you want to do well in the exams, please study the book. There are a bunch of examples, bunch of exercises that you that you need to you need to cover in the book. You mean the questions of the of the books? Yes, the exercises, the example assessment problems, all of these are very useful. Okay, thanks. <laughs>